everyone and welcome back to another Specimen Saturday and today is kind of a bittersweet Specimen Saturday. Um, unfortunately when we moved the birds from the upstairs to the downstairs, my Goulian finches, my breeding pair Ossii and Persimmon had been sitting on several fertilized eggs. But the move to a whole different environment and a whole different room proved to be a little bit too distracting and Persimmon, who normally always remains on her eggs no matter what chaos goes around, um, I mean, if you guys remember <laughs> from all the way back when we had a carbon dioxide, um, carbon monoxide leak in the house and we had to rush the birds next door to my neighbors and Persimmon wouldn't get off her babies. We've had to, like, practically resuscitate her babies when the heater went out in the middle of winter and everything was frozen and they were just little frozen flesh nuggets. She still sat on her babies. <laughs> so it was a little bit bittersweet that she just was a little too distracted this time. Totally understandable on her part. You can't just take a bird's tree, basically, their nest and their cage, put it in a new location and expect her to go, oh, this is still safe enough to raise my young when she doesn't know what's in her environment. So Persimmon got off her eggs for so long that they did die in shell and she just hasn't been interested in sitting on the old ones. And it's in the breeding season, so this was going to be her last clutch uh, that I was going to let her have because she's laid so many eggs this year. So I thought instead of just do my usual routine of sadly emptying the nest, I would show you guys how they build their nest inside of the oatmeal containers that I usually provide to them. The Goulian finches are an endangered bird from Australia. They're endangered due to a lot of bushfires destroying the native grasses and seeds that they typically eat. And they are beautiful. <laughs> They're bright, bright colored finches. Um, the researchers whose papers I read from Australia really care a lot about these birds. They're just kind of a, a species that has a bad side effect to all the bushfires and loss of habitat. And they're a little bit difficult to get people excited about finches, even when they're as beautiful as they are. But in the wild, these finches will nest in long branches that have hollow places in them. So in captivity, we give them long tubes, usually. and They're better than a normal bird nest box, but a long tube-like thing that they can lay their eggs inside of. And my parents bred Gouldian finches for a few years as a therapeutic hobby, and my mom and dad found that they could spend big bucks on boxes, nest boxes, for the finches, but they were never as successful as a simple ice cream or oatmeal container that was nice and long, kind of like a tube shape, just like the branches they preferred, with an opening cut in the front. And the benefit of this is that they're also cheap, and once the birds use it as a nest, make a big mess inside of it. There's lots of poop when the babies stay in here for a good month. It gets really nasty. You can just throw it away when they're done. When all the babies are fledged and no one cares about the nest anymore, you can remove it and throw it away. So that's the benefit of disposable bird nests like these. Um, and I typically, when we were doing ice cream containers, I would name each clutch after the ice cream flavor that was on the box. But now we've switched to oatmeal because these are actually smaller in diameter than the, the ice cream containers tend to be like that big. And they're longer, so my finches really, really seem to prefer oatmeal containers about this size. You can see where you put the twist ties at the back, so you can twist tie them to the side of the cage. And the birds and the container are actually so light that they hang there just fine. But, unfortunately, despite Ossia and Persimmon's best efforts, they did not have this clutch hatch. But I thought it would be a great opportunity to open it up, so you can see how the lid just pops right off, and share with you guys what it looks like when a Gouldian finch makes their nest and how the eggs are normally in the little cavity at the back. So hang on, I'm going to move you so that as I gently take this apart, you can see everything a little better. So right over here, this is the two types of nesting material I use this time around. Normally, I use this little fiber because it's very easy for the birds to pull it apart from the fabric it's themselves, which is a great enrichment item. But I lost my fiber when we moved things around, and I couldn't find it. But you can see how this is Ossiai's work right here. His hard work to fill this thing mostly up along the sides, kind of in a sloping pattern up like this on either side with all of the paper and all of the string. So if I gently, I'm going to try to keep it as intact as possible. Yet look, you can see how compact it has been from the way that he has just dutifully 
try to put everything up along both sides to keep his nest as warm as possible. So that's really providing like a lot of shelter, a lot of security for, for their future eggs. And if I just keep pulling it out all the way, there we go. You can see the back, that is how tightly he packed it into this little tube. Now the tube's completely empty. And all of the material is right here. You can see how he layered the pieces one by one so that he could make this really, I mean, look at this. It doesn't fall apart when I tug on it. And these are individual strands for the most part. In some places you can see where he just went ahead and grabbed the entire thing. Normally the birds will tug this apart, but when he gets frustrated and in, he's a really great nest builder and he'll get really caught up in the idea of nest building. So every now and then he'll just like grab the whole thing and shove it in there because he's in a rush. But what we're looking for is actually right down here, right at the back, the very back, is where you can see they tucked the eggs right here. So you can see those little eggs right there. And unfortunately, they all died in shell. The coloration that you see is the embryo that had been developing. But look how many there were. There were so many, and every single one was fertile. So I'm really sad these guys got scared off their babies because there were six beautiful little eggs, and they all had little embryo babies inside of them. But Aussie and Persimmon just didn't appreciate um, being moved. And again, that's not to say they're bad bird parents. That is just a side effect of them being in an unfamiliar environment and going, my tree just moved, this isn't good, I don't think I can stay here and pay attention to these eggs when something might come eat me any minute. So it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's kind of sad, but look, this is how they keep their eggs in kind of this circle. And the reason they do that is if you look closely, you can see where the pointed end of the egg faces inward, and that's to keep the eggs from rolling away. So you can see how they are actually laid out in a very specific pattern. That puts them all in a very close location, it keeps the eggs from rolling away, and it lets persimmon or ossei, since the male Gouldian finches will also roost on top of their eggs, it makes it possible so that when they jump into the nest, they can go dit -dit 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 -dit, and they can perch right here and spread themselves over all of their eggs at once to ensure that they stay nice and warm. So yeah, you can see how dark they are. Uh, my second fertile clutch of the year. But that's why you, you don't want to move your birds when they're going. And they're so cold now. So I'm actually going to take one of these eggs. And we're going to look at it under the bright light. Yeah, hi Juvies. Hi, I know. Not much appreciated, I know. And remember when we could look at this and we could see like the little tiny veins and we could see into it? Well, you can't really see very well into it now because it is just that, that developed bird. They were probably only maybe a few days to a week away from hatching. But it happens. It happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give Ossii back this nest because Persimmon has laid very many eggs this year. She's probably laid close to 30 eggs, which is far more than I wanted. I removed the nest several times and she kept laying eggs because Ossii would build the nest or like even try to build a nest in a seed container and she would continue to lay eggs. So this is it for her. These I'm going to just go bury out in the garden. That's what I do whenever I get these little guys. Uh, if they're infertile, I keep them but I don't want the fertile ones with the dead embryos inside to spoil, so I bury them. And, oh, yeah, if you look at, let me grab, there we go. Like here is an infertile finch egg months after it was laid. Totally clear, totally white. You can see the extreme difference. But I'm going to remove Persimmon from Ossie's cage for the very first time because she won't stop laying eggs because her babies didn't hatch. And I'm going to give Ossie, because he still wants to have babies, his nest back and put a new bird, a new female in with him for the first time in their lives just to see what happens. So you can keep up to date on those kinds of shenanigans over on our vlog channel. We'll see how the birds get along. Also there's a dove coming along for their morning dove food. And this is basically 
how they build their nest. So thank you for joining me on this specimen Saturday. Uh, I really love just seeing what goes on. Again, sad the eggs didn't hatch, but it's fun that we can take it out and look at it and see the way that they pack the nest so full just for these tiny little things at the back. And it filled up the whole tube. Oh, they're awesome birds. I hope you guys enjoyed though. Don't worry, this isn't as sad as it seems. It just is part of life. That's why they lay so many eggs. And they did have two successful clutches, or two successful uh, babies that made it to adulthood this year too. So we'll have to see what they do next year when it's time for those two to breed again. But for now, we're going to make Persimmon have a rest because she has laid so many eggs. And every time a bird lays an egg, it depletes the calcium in their bones. So we don't want her to get very sick by laying too many eggs. I'm going to put her in a different cage because they just won't stop those two. And I'm going to go put some fresh food out for Mr. Dove over there. So I'll see you guys next time. And remember, stay curious.